So, so let me start by thanking DBT Welcome Alliance and the organizers for giving an opportunity to put forth NCS contribution towards present national need due to this pandemic. For the benefit of audience, I will start with a brief introduction about National Center for Cell Science, an autonomous institution of the Department of Biotechnology Government of India. Its basis was laid in 1986 as Cell Depository Program and subsequently was renamed as National Center for Cell Science or NCS as we know today. Over here, it has made its mark as one of the leading cell biology research institutes in the country and all over the world. Being guided in its journey so far by Dr. Ullas' work to begin with, subsequently taken forward by Padma Sri, Dr. Gyan Chand Mishra, and then present DGCSR Dr. Sheikh Mandi. NCS serves the nation by maintaining and distributing a large number of animal cell cultures to various colleges, universities, research institutions. By doing so, we increase the pursuit of cell biology in the country. We also created a state of the art infrastructure for the characterization and authentication of cell lines. The primary mandate of NCCS is to perform basic and fundamental research in the major domains of cell biology, to serve as a national cell repository in country, and more importantly, to contribute towards building a pool of highly trained, motivated human resources by training and teaching. Yes. The scientific domains which are primarily being worked to address various questions relevant to human health and disease are indicated in the slide. In addition to being a national cell repository, NCS also established the DBT Center of Excellence National Center for Microbial Resources, as it's called NCMR, with a special mandate for the collection, identification, preservation, and distribution of microbial cultures. NCS NCMR is the largest individual microbial collection center in the world. It has been instrumental in facilitating research in microbial ecology in India. To achieve this mandate, and to carry forward scientific activities, we are supported by highly trained scientists and technical staff, PhD students and project students, and well supported by administrative manpower. Moving forward in the line with the theme of the today's topic and the challenges being faced by all of us in the world, and presently more so in our country, is because of COVID-19 pandemic. Well, Dr. Somitra has already given a bit detailed description about it. What I'll only highlight is the common symptoms of infection are fever, headache, muscle ache, cough, sore throat, and breathlessness. Looking at the timeline for the world to getting to know about COVID-19, how it has aggressively moved all over the world is shown in the slide. The first patient was identified with coronavirus symptoms like symptoms was in Wuhan, China. As the virus started moving out of the China to Thailand, WHO declared it as a global health emergency on January 30th, 2020. On the same day, first case in India was reported from Kerala. Subsequently, it was being detected in many countries. And as on March 11th, WHO declared COVID-19 as a pandemic. Presently, all over the world, more than 20 million people, 20 million cases have been reported from around 188 countries. 15 million people have recovered and more than seven like deaths have been reported all over the world. As for the spread of the disease in India is concerned, the timeline is shown in this slide. The first case being detected on January 30th in Kerala, it has been progressively covering all over India. As of 20th August, nearly 2.8 million cases have been reported, whereas approximately 6.5 lakh people are actively carrying this virus. Good news is that more than 20 lakh people have recovered. So far, India has recorded 53,000 deaths, which have been attributed to COVID-19 infection. From It's likely that due to timely effective control measures implemented by the central and state governments, the death rate has been contained to an extent. Presently, Maharashtra is one of the most affected states. It has more than 60 lakh cases reported, out of which 4 lakh have recovered. Currently, 1.6 lakh cases are active, with over 20,000 deaths reported. Pune, where NCS is located, presently has more than 40,000 active cases. Now, having briefly mentioned about COVID and its spread, let's also look into consequences of being infected by this virus in brief. Following infection, the individual may be symptomatic or asymptomatic. This is likely to be dependent on many host factors as well as virus type. The host factors may play a key role. Of the host factors play a key role are immune status of an individual severity of symptoms, factors such as age and existing comorbidities. By and large, it has been reported that, that children and young adults can be symptomatic, can be asymptomatic. Also, the mortality rate is affected 
by how prone is the individual to respiratory diseases, past history of pneumonia-like symptoms, additionally, pre-existing pre-existence of diabetes, obesity, hypertension, etc., etc., have been related to the status of disease in individuals. As stated earlier by Dr. Tangarajan, primarily the testing of COVID is done by RT-PCR, and later on, the tests where an antibody test, antibody test can be done or antigen test can be done, have been uh, have been carried on. But what is uh, what the newly added antigen test has been uh, promoted all over and what is happening is with antigen antigen testing, however, in, in non positive non positive antigen tests, then the confirmation needs to be done by RT PCR. Moving forward further towards the initiative taken by NCS over the last six months are highlighted in this slide. NCS have been actively engaged in various activities to facilitate the ongoing efforts against COVID 19 outbreak in the country. It is, one, it is one of the government laboratories identified to carry out testing for COVID-19. Given its expertise in biotechnology research, NCSS confidently took responsibility because of the determination and commitment of the ICS scientists, technical staff, and unconditional support by other staff members. Soon after it was approved as a diagnostic, diagnostic facility by DBT and ICMR and Maharashtra state government, NCCS care, carefully assessed the challenge ahead and made extensive and speedy preparations. These included reorganization of some of the research laboratories into diagnosis centers, procurement of supplies like PPE kits, formulating and validating a standard operating procedure, getting technical and scientific staff trained at the National Institute of Virology for COVID-related biosafety measures and sample testing. Registering the facility with the appropriate authorities, NCS began testing samples for COVID-19 towards the end of April 2020. In addition to setting up testing facility, NCS also initiated work towards biobanking of biological material, sequencing of viral genome, and COVID-19 related activities. The diagnostic facility at NCS rose to its challenge by accelerating the rate of sample tested per day. With a determined team effort, NCS has now tested over 17,000 samples. Further, NCS has also provided guidance and assistance to institutes in Pune to set up COVID-19 testing facilities on their respective campuses, and also shared resources with neighboring institutions. In addition to testing, as already stated, a biobank of blood cells and plasma from infected and convalescent COVID patients has been created at NCCS, which will serve as an invaluable resource for future research as well. Until now, more than 100 samples have been stored. NCS has also been facilitating COVID-related research and other organizations by supplying cell cultures, which are necessary to carry out this work. Also, as Dr. Somitra pointed out before, we have been part of we have been part of uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, consortium of DBT, so which was set up to sequence the genome of virus from clinical samples collected at different locations in the country. The initiative aimed at understanding the genetic variation of this virus across the country is being, as stated by Mamitra by NIBMG and involves national research laboratories. NCC still now has submitted 19 whole genome sequences toward COVID genome and to the global database gay set. Moving on from collective initiatives, next few slides will take you through the research initiatives which are being pursued at, by, NCS, by scientists at NCCS. This project is dealing with production of pseudotype SARS-CoV-2 in BSL2 setting using VSP platform for candidate vaccine development and biomedical research use, which has been done in collaboration with IIT Indore through BIRAC funding. Presently, pseudoviruses have been established and testing for neutralization using standard antibodies is in progress. The efforts are also underway for generation of virus neutralizing human monoclonal antibodies against SARS-CoV-2 in partnership with IIT Indore, Radiomics Technologies Private Limited, Bharat Biotech, and FMC with support from CSR, New India, Millennium Indian Technology Leadership Initiative. CIRA from patients were screened for the presence of receptor binding domain specific antibodies. B cell from these patients which were positive for RBT specific antibodies were cultured. B cell clones were tested for specific antibodies against RBT peptide. Selection of positive clones screening RBT specific antibodies is being done at present. 
Additionally, as a proof of concept, generation of vaccine candidate using a mix of synthetic antigens that can elicit SARS-2, SARS-CoV-2 IgA res antibody response to protect lung and mucous surface is being undertaken. In this project, antigenic peptides have been designed and synthesized. Mice have been immunized with synthetic antigen peptides. At present, CIRA has been evaluated for immune response by ELISA. And the, the fourth one being also that using machine learning tools, diverse viral sequences reported from different parts of the world have been analyzed and four peptides have been identified, which have shown strong binding affinity against main protease of SARS-CoV-2. Simulation studies suggest that peptides are stable, further extended and computational studies are underway. And all this work described in this presentation was possible only because of support extended by NCS staff, either for testing, biobanking, and genome sequencing, as well as research activities. Also, the support extended by Department of Biotechnology Government of India, Indian Council of Medical Research, New Delhi, NIV, Pune, BGA Medical College, Pune, FMC, Pune, IDSP, and DMR for helping us in achieving our goals. And we'll continue to do that. Thank you very much.